Well, hi guys, um, I'm back again. And I just wanted to make a, a little home video, just running through um, some ras fishing techniques, uh, lures I'm using and how I'm targeting them. Uh, it's something that I've really enjoyed over the past you know, year and a half. And uh, I figured it'd be a nice time just to make another video while the weather is yet again, absolutely awful. So yeah, it's what it is. But um, yeah, I thought we'd, we'd run for a few lures to start with and run for a setup or two. Um, and then we'll move on to techniques. I had a little go the other day, didn't catch anything. I was out for about three quarters of an hour on some new ground, but I thought I would go for a big rasp. But the main main point was that I wanted to film a little video. Um, so yeah, I, I filmed a bit about how to use the techniques and you know the different methods I'm doing. So hopefully that'll be useful, but I'll, I'll stick that in at the end of the video. Um, but yeah, anyway, I'd like to run through some lures, so let's get into it. Right, I said this last time, but I'll try it again. This time I'm gonna try and run for it as quick as possible. As you see, there's absolutely loads. Um, but, well, I like to split it into three sections. So you've got, you got your shads. Um, that's something like this. This is the Kardec Easy Shiner 3.5. Uh, paddle tail, you know, a nice, nice size from, you know, small fish right up to the bigger wrasse. Um, and I, I, I say I have these in all, all the different colours. I'm not trying to spill any. Got the AUs, the bubble, bubblegum pinks. Morning Dawn, uh, one of the natural colours. And some of these as well, some little, you know, other other styled shads. Uh, I don't think it matters too much. As long as that paddle tail's working, um, they'll, they'll work. You know, you can fish these on absolutely anything as well. Uh, Things like this on a jig head. This is not weedless. I, I wouldn't fish it straight away, as I'll come on to in a bit. But, um, you know, nice and simple. Cast them out, reel them in. Just keep them near the bottom and you'll get ras. You know, that's probably the easiest, most simple lure that everyone uses, catches fish. So that's kind of the first section. Okie doke. So the next um, the next ones I'm going to run through, these are your Senkos. Uh, very slightly different to your, uh, well, to your paddle tails, and I tend to fish them a bit differently. Um, that's something like this. Um, and these you really want to be keeping on the bottom. Uh, you, you know, you don't, for the ras fishing, you want these, you know, that if that's the bottom, you know, standing upright almost. Um, you, can, you can rig these multiple ways. Uh, it's something like called a racky or wacky rig. Uh, it's not something I actually I'm familiar with, but I know a few of the perch guys tend to fish them. Uh, I I I like to fish them something like this. This is a Lunker City. Uh, I think this is called a Sluggo. It's slightly different. You can notice how it's a uh, flat along the top. Uh, and this is on a a uh, weedless jig head. So these so these you can obviously keep right in the snags without the risk of losing them so much. Um, so yeah, that's that's that one. You can fish, you know, you can fish them on other things as well. It's quite a big one for I'll use this for the big ras. More probably more of a battler to be honest with you, but they will work. This is on a big weedless hook. I tend to fish these, so Cheb, Carolina, Texas. Uh what else? That's kind of it really, and obviously the weedless jig heads. There aren't a huge amount of these, you know, Senkos, Sluggos. But all you all you really want to do with these, I don't really know what the rats think they are, but as long as that tail's moving, you know, you can work super slowly, you can almost bump them. Especially the um the Z-Man TRD, I think they're called the TRDs. Uh, I'm not I don't really use Z-Man to be honest with you. I really should, but I've just never really got around to it. Um But you know, the boy in, the boy on Senkos, what you can do is you can obviously bump them, pause, and don't be afraid with these to stop for, you know, up to five to 10 seconds, you know, especially in winter when they're lethargic, the ras will just look. And even when that's like, when you're not reeling in and, you know, as long as you keep that line tight, that lure, even on the bottom, is still going to be moving um, in the current. And it will be, in, if there's a ras following it, it might just need that little bit extra convincing. And that's what you'll get with the uh, very slow, slow um, movement Senkos. So it doesn't look like much at all. And in the water, it doesn't really, look not much but the ras seem to love them um it's something that done me very well with, over the summer so that kind of rounds up senkos um there's loads of loads on the market z-man gary yotamoto how you say it um savage gear do a few nice ones now as well 
just to name a few i'm sure i'm missing many but that's kind of puts that to wrap so now we're gonna move on to crawls um and finally the last big section i think and probably my favorites got crawls um what is a crawl well this is a crawl it is a this is a um Kai tech cra crazy flapper 3.6 yeah, you see, absolutely full of movement. It's got, you see, it's got its two claw, two claw things at the front, and then at the back, its main, you know, its main means of propulsion, and where all of the, uh, all of the movement comes through. Um, and these are honestly absolutely lethal. Uh, you can get all sorts of different types of crews as well. Same with the Senkos, actually. You can get, you know, floating ones. I think this is a Fox one, um, and these actually stand up on the bottom, so. Z-Man do a lot of the uh, TRDs, you know, and the floating floating materials. Uh, but yeah, so these are the these are the crews. Um, they're all fairly similar. Imitate what well, what we'll um with the RAS, they'll often be in the boulder fields hunting crab. That's probably one of their main foods. So with one of these, you can really, really imitate, you know, a small, small crab. Um and uh, color wise, you can you know you've got everything from the uh, it's a headbanger one, really natural greens. Uh, a good one for me is I've actually they're in another box, a June bug. So it's just a black and a, a black and blue. Um, there we go. This isn't a uh, isn't a cruel, but this is just this is the June bug color. You see, it's it's almost purple. Um, and these, you know, that is a really, really good colour for Ras. Uh, they'd actually like, I find they really like the dark colours. So, uh, yeah, that's kind of, kind of simply and as quick as possible. Don't know why I just put that look there. It's, you know, your crews. Um, and with these, these you always want on the bottom, imitating a crab. There's, you know, if they're not in the, you know, in the deck, they will not be taking these. Um... And right, so what I'll probably end up doing now is I'll just move on to the uh, rigging because there's so many, you know, the shads, the senkos, and the uh, paddle tails. There's so many different ways of rigging them. So yeah. All right, finally, I've just had another um, idea. It's another box here. This is more bass orientated tackle, but it is something that I know a few people do for the ras. Um, they will use speci lures specifically designed for bass. So these are the. Uh, savage gear weedless minnows um you can see that head there made for bumping along the bottom i personally these are about seven eight nine nine personally i'm a bit nervous using these because obviously with ras fishing one of the main things is you want to keep it as cheap as possible because you will snow up all day long if you're not careful uh even even the weedless stuff you know it still gets caught very easily so you know that um savage gear weedless minnows um <laughs> Very brave one here, and actually my favourite, probably the best wrestler I've ever used. I don't use them. Uh, I'm sure it takes uh, like not a lot of thinking if you fish before and you caught wrasse. One of these fish black minnows. This is a 12 gram shore version. Very. I think I've had eight or nine wrasse on a single lure before it snapped, got snapped off by a big one. Um, but obviously that's good going because the tails are just so fragile on these. Um, so you know. You, Personally, I wouldn't use them. You know, you're looking at like two pound for the paddle tail, and nine out of ten times a ras will grab it and snap the tail. Um, even if you land the fish, the tail will be buggered. So, I personally will try and avoid them. Uh, if you're getting into ras fishing and you don't mind paying a bit of money, black minnows are probably your best bet just as a first lure. But I think I think these are nine ninety nine now. I remember when they were like six, but inflation and you know the way the tackle shops have got to make their money somehow. Um, so yeah, that's the final, final kind of lure we use. Uh, you can use other stuff as well. If you're on the boat, they use slow pitch jigs, um, certain, certain methods like that. I personally wouldn't really know a huge amount about it as I'm, I'm more short orientated, but that is, you know, that is one thing that people have been started doing. And there's, there's plenty of videos Unleashed charters over, um, in Penzance. They've got a few videos on, you know, the, um, Jigging, slow pitch jigging for Ras. And uh, if you're interested in the boat game, I highly recommend getting out on them. Uh, but yeah, right. So I'm going to move a little bit now onto you know the different options because there's absolutely hundreds and you know different rigs we can use. 
Okay, so uh, we're just moving on to hooks here. So these are the sort of things we use. Um, notice how everything is weedless. Uh, I'll, I'll pass. There's no point using a J hook because you just lose it straight away. So uh, yeah, always always weedless with grass. Um, so we've got a few different types here. These are these are um, forgive me. These are bass bass hooks, but I'll just show you for the uh, concept. So we've got a twist lock. Uh, these are going to be called slide hooks. Um, they're quite expensive. Oh no, that doesn't want my tungsten things. They're quite expensive, but uh, they're a good way for the big shads. You know, I wouldn't use anything over six inch for shads, but you know, for a really big grass, a twist lock's always a good uh, good option. Um, I wouldn't use them on cruel so much because obviously they've got a huge, really wide gate. Um, but again, a very strong hook, very thick wire, and that is what you want for grass. All right, moving on to the territory, you know, what, what we tend to use here. This is, all, again, a bit on the bigger side. These are the Gamma, Gamma, Gamma Katsu um, worm offsets. Uh, you can use the EWGs. You can get these in sizes, you know, right down to like size six, size eight, probably even smaller. You know, all the way up to, you know, seven, to, you know, to your bigger, bigger ones. I'd say for your normal UK ras fishing, if you're targeting big ras, 4 would be about as big as I'd go. Um, I mean, you, you'll get more of everything, even up to 6 six is probably really, but it's a successfully good hookup rate because they haven't got the biggest mouths. 3 this is what I tend to stick with for the big fish. Um, so, yeah. And, you know, your 1 O's is, what, I think, conventional, you know, your 3 inch, 4 inch lures. Like, so, you know, uh, 2.5 to 3.5 I'd go on a 1 0. Uh, and then right down to you know, what you want when you're getting storage warnings on your phone while filming that video. Never mind. Um, yeah, size four. These are the uh, Gerza. These good hooks, but you, you, they're really thin gauge. You know, you won't, you won't uh, want these for big fish because as soon as you lock that drag out, which I'll get on to in a bit, these will bend out. Trust me, they do. Um, so you know, for the smaller stuff, these are fine. But I wouldn't, you know, especially these thinner gauge wires, not for the big ones at all. That's pretty good. All the fun. But I think it's always a good idea if you're buying weedless hooks, go in the shop and actually look. Um, these are my favourites, actually. These are the Fox Rage ones. They're really thick, um, super sharp. And uh, they're all barbed, but you can make these barbless, you know, just very easily crush the barbs. And you've got to worry about the hook points snapping. I've had that in the past with hooks where you crush the barb and you end up snapping the actual hook point. Um, but yeah, these are these are a really good hook, and I've never never had an issue with these bending out. Generally, if you get snagged, you'll lose the you'll lose these because they won't bend off the uh, off the rocks. So these they're my go to. Um, <clears throat> failing that, the Galakatsu. These are the worms. Um, very good, very good hooks. Uh, they're, they're not the cheapest. These are about three fifty to four pound a pack. Um, and there's what, only six in there. But you know, these these are the hooks that I would stick with and they will last. Like it's, it's pretty important to get a good quality hook. You don't want to um you don't want to be fishing something that you don't have trust in because these rasps go like stick when you hook them. So yeah, that kind of sums up my hooks anyway. That's what that's what I'll be using. Uh there's obviously different stuff. I have used I have used the drop shot for rasps, um, not so much off the shore. But you know you can use all your way down for your drop shot hooks obviously the wacky wacky rigged hooks um so that kind of run well runs through the hooks that we'll be using all right so i'm just going to move on to a few various bits and pieces now um so the rigs for ras first i've got the cheb um this is a tungsten one this is a street fish in london probably my favorite tungsten uh, on the market at the moment uh, very, very nice wire on them. I just need to push that on for a bit. I'm holding the phone in one hand, so I can't. But um, I think a good, good rule of thumb for your ras is you want a thick gauge wire. Because if it's too thin, the ras will just bend them out. Um, so again, I always say buy, buy quality tongue. If you're buying cheb, quality cheb is, you know, always a good good starting point. Um, so something like these, these are really good. I like tungsten because it's obviously more dense. It's much more um, subtle. Because you don't want a massive great weight dragging behind your lure. These are, you know, these you know, these are really small, so you don't fish don't notice them as much. 
you also get a much better um, feel on the lure. Doesn't matter so much of your wrasse, but if you're perch fishing or, you know, it, it, it does help. Um, and also there is environmental benefits for using tungsten. Personally, it, you know, it is what it is. I don't think a, a bit of lead, you know, that size is going to, you know, kill the ocean. But especially in the fresh water, you know, it's always a good idea to use tungsten. Um, the only downside with tungsten is it's blooming expensive. You know, you're looking at anywhere. I've seen I've seen tungsten recently going for ten pound for a single jig head. Admittedly, it was like a fifteen gram jig head. <coughs> there may be, but um, yeah, at the show, the big one, there's some silly money for tungsten. Just you know, little bits of tungsten. So that is one thing that I've found with tungsten. You know, if you're starting out, I would stick with something like this. This is just your generic cone lead. Um, I suppose this is probably about seven grams. Uh, I always like them as a cup shape in there. I think that's good because obviously you can hide the noisy burger. You can hide the um the bead and obviously the eye of the hook. Uh, it just makes it more flush and makes it look not, look slightly nicer. Um, I was going to show you I had a tungsten one of them as well, but it rolled down the back there, so that's gone for the time being so that's kind of the tungsten um and the comb weights just said uh, just another thing with these you can fish these on a on a texas rig carolina rig um that's the two that we use the comb, comb weights for and obviously the chair these are made for being in contact with the lure i know the lrf guys they use them sometimes so you've got your chair and then a bit of line after but that you, you won't use these with the rust because they'll get stuck straight away um so yeah, that's that. Next up, what should we go on to? We've got these. I've already covered these a little bit. These are the um these are the weedless jig heads. Really like these again. Here's one fully rigged up. See what I mean? They're so flushed, you know, you they're just brilliant. They look smart as well. Um and again, much, much better contact with these. You can just bump them, bump them. You know, nice big, nice big paws. Again, that's the June bug I was talking about earlier. Uh, but yeah, these are these are really good. Um, you can get these all the way down to where is he? Very small. Again, very thin gauge. This is the decoy violence. Um, I wouldn't again wouldn't use. Personally, I find the violence in the smaller sizes obviously a very thin gauge hook. You wouldn't want them for big grass. I would always, if you want to use a small, small jig head for rass, these are my go-tos. So they are decoy rock bomb. Now I was absolutely nailing rass on these last summer. Um, you know, I had a, some cracking fish on these. So these are these are my go-to, and also the the um, point is slightly. Yeah. All right. So yeah, the notice as well. These uh, the point is slightly bent inwards. It's quite hard to pick up on camera. But that's brilliant because what what it does is when you're tucking that lure in, you don't. I you can fish these weedless, but I think it's always best just to nick it under the soft plastic. I'll show you in better detail in a minute. But um, that's always a good good thing. Um, and obviously that meant ever so slightly inwards, there's less chance of getting snagged. So that's uh, that's the weedless jig heads, and for them I would go decoy. There's some really good ones on the market now. They're not hard to get hold of in the UK either. The violence, the rock bomb. Um, they're my two go-tos, and there's obviously also I think HDO do a few. Um, you know, mo most brands are now have now had a look. And you can get them in your tungsten, and then obviously your generic lead tungsten being about four times the price. Um, and then finally, the last one I'm going to cover, uh, and one that one that's done me done me well again last summer. Something I was never used until last, obviously last summer. And then I thought give it a go, and kind of fell in love with it. It's the Jika rig. Um, so this is quite, I haven't actually gotten rigged up. So you've got your weight, I think this is about eight grams, um, down to a split ring. And all you're going to do is you're going to put the split, split ring over the, um, onto the eye of the hook, just like so. And then, uh, I've got soft plastic to hand. Obviously, the my fingers are soft plastic. You put your soft plastic on over that. Um, so it's very similar to a Cheb. To be honest with you, there isn't much difference at all. Cheb bin, you're in contact. This, you're, you know, you're tying off to a split ring. Um, 
and you're not actually directly in contact with the lead, if that makes sense. Not really, I haven't explained that well. But um, that's the Chica, right? Very similar to the Cheb. Uh, to be honest with you, there aren't major differences. Possibly you've got more upwards articulation. So obviously with a Cheb, your line will be on there. With a Jiki, you know, you can lift that hook up, especially on a buoyant, on a buoyant um, crawl. There might be slightly more movement on that front, but I'm not too sure. Uh, but yeah, very similar to the Cheb. That's the Jika rig for you. Uh, I wouldn't go, wouldn't go any higher than 10 grams for the majority of the racing, um, weight wise, on the more on the smaller stuff. All right, so very quickly, I've got to go for my tea in a second, but um, these are absolutely essential. Float stops, they're pence really. You can know you can pick a whole box up for like a quid, but. Uh, for any kind of wrasse fishing, I always have a float stop or two to hand. This is for your um, Carolina rigs, for your Texas rigs. Um, so yeah, they're really handy. You can get these in different colours as well. Um, not that I think it really matters, but you know, luminous stuff as well. Um, so yeah, that's kind of the rig. I won't show you how to tie a rig because there's thousands of videos on YouTube. Well, it's the, uh, it's the next day. Uh, one thing led to another. I didn't have time to finish off after my dinner. But, um, dropping things already. I thought I'd just run through the, uh, the setup that I'm using. So this is my main, main rasin, rasin gear for the minute. Um, this is a HTO Nebula. And this is a seven, where is it? Seven to 30 gram. Uh, and this is brilliant for most HRF, um, for heavier gear anyway. You know, I wouldn't really use things over 15 grams for the ras. But, you know, for the lighter side, this is, you know, this rod's got the backbone to bully, you know, a four or five pound rassel, no issue. Um, I want something in the ranges, you know, seven, seven foot six, maybe to about nine foot for the longer stuff. Personally, I never really found much of a need for a longer rod for rass fishing, because obviously the fish are under your feet, the distance, pretty irrelevant if you ask me. Um, the only benefit of a longer rod, obviously, is you've got the, uh, the extra leverage to pull them out of the snags. Um, so yeah, you know, you can do your research on that. Uh, where would I get one from? Probably the best place, if you wanna, if you wanna like get into ras fishing, looking at a rod, Art Fishing over in uh, Cornwall. Uh, they've got some, you know, they've got really, really extensive, extensive rod uh, range up there. And you know, they can really help you. They're really nice guys that will, uh, run the shop. So they'll, they'll be happy to give you any, any help if you wanted to. So, um, you know, that's probably where I'd start failing that your local tackle shops. Uh, if you're from Devon, Oswald and Craig, obviously, it's a brilliant shop. Um, but yeah, these are these are the nebulas. Um, I highly, highly recommend these. And they're, these aren't silly money. I think these were about 130. Uh, but obviously, you know, quality gear. Um, and I've never had an issue with these breaking. I know people in the past have said that they break. I think that's because they're probably one of the most popular ones in the UK. Obviously, the amount of demand, there's going to be a lot more than snap. But that's uh, that's the rod sorted. Um, and then I've also got another rod that's all set up with uh, some perch fishing gear because that one doubles over. This one doubles as my bass rod. Um, and that one doubles as my perch rod. That's a 2 to 10 gram major craft Benke. And I use that for, you know, the, the smaller stuff, the small jig heads, small sub sub four inch lures um and that's that's a that's quite a stiff quite a stiff rod so that you know I, again i f feel no problem i've had rasta four and a half pound on that rod and you know i never thought that i was uh, i never felt uncomfortable landing that um so you know that's another good rod the benkies but i'll go something stiff you don't want something super sen sensitive um and something that's gonna obviously bend lots obviously you need that bit but the more I think the more bend it's got, the more chance of us for us digging in a snag. So uh, I like something a bit stiffer for the ras personally. Um real wise. Uh I would say general rule of thumb, depending on what you want, two reels for the a two to ten, you'll want something at one thousand, two thousand, possibly a two five hundred if you um if you want to really up up it. Uh for the you know the heavy seven foot six um bigger rods you want something like this this is a three thousand uh is it a three three thousand foot yeah this is a three thousand three thousand three thousand five hundred 
four thousand just maybe but after that you're too you're too big really um i like so obviously you want a front drag for ras because i'll just spend half a fight i'm just you know changing the drag um and uh i know a lot of reels these days of this feature here i can't really show it but you can click that it's the i think they call it the anti-reverse switch or something i'm not too sure and obviously it backwinds absolutely no point on ras because if you're using that the fish has got you in a snag so uh that's something that i found no need in that whatsoever um so yeah that kind of sums up reels again i'm always a, i'm a shimano uh, person this is an excellent so obviously again quite a high end quite a high end reel but you really don't need to spend that much you know you can pick something up for probably 30 quid i say a good drag is important something more proofs a bonus but apart from that, you know, there's millions of reels on the market um, and you'll be absolutely fine. So I'd always go probably starting out a Daiwa Ninja. They are at retail at about 70 quid. They're really, really well known. Great reels. Um, they go all the way from 1,000 up to probably, you know, at least to 3,000. And I know they go much higher than that. Um, so there, yeah, that kind of sums up the reels. I'd say again a, a probably a better end reel shimano stradic that's what i was using on my ultralight uh rasin setup and again fantastic reels same with the bamfords and then after that obviously it's pretty self-explanatory but obviously the more you spend the better you get as a general rule of thumb um so yeah that kind of sums up reels and i'm going to move on to braid um braid's an interesting one because everyone's different with it everyone some people like you know, a lighter braid, uh, some people go much heavier. I, well, my mate, he fishes 36, which I've always said is a bit silly, it's far too heavy, but he gets them in. Uh, yeah, you know, the lot of stuff, there's a chance you're not going to get them in. I personally, I'll go £20 for this, and then 15 on my ultralight. I mean, considering it's a 1,000 size reel, £15 braid is relatively heavy, but that is what you'll need for, um, you know, getting these in. I wouldn't go under 9. 9 is an absolute bare minimum, but... I would feel much more confident on 15 to 20. Um, I've, I think I had 24 pound on during the summer and that that was, as long as it's thin, you know, it doesn't really matter. Go as heavy as you can. Um, but you just, you know, that's the last thing you want is to be leaving hooks and fish just because the braid snaps because it can't deal with the fight. If you've never caught a ras before, I'm telling you, like, they are hard fighting. I think they're the, well. They are the hardest fighting fish in the uh, UK. I would have said, um, but a lot, like a long, long way. Um, so yeah, that's kind of, kind of sums up braid. And then also very quickly, you can get all the different colours. I don't think it really matters. Um, I know some people use pink. Some people use you know greens, yellows, blues. Just get what, just get whatever you want, whatever's cheap, and you know. There's all, all sorts on the market. Uh, J Braid, that's, that's my go to personally. Uh, I think this is some Shimano stuff actually. It's only about 20 quid to ball, so not, not bad. Tailwalk makes some nice ones, and obviously, um, there's some high end Japanese stuff if you want to invest in it. Personally, never really seen much of a need. But um, that kind of sums up the setup. Uh, well, this is my heaviest setup, and obviously, I won't get the lighter one out because it's all rigged up with mono uh because of uh we fishing a few perch fisheries that don't allow braid so that's anyway different topic i'm waffling again um that's so uh, yeah that basically sums up rod and reel line i've done lures i've done weights rigging um so next up i'm just got i tried to film a little video i've no idea how good it is but uh i've got a nice bit of it, um footage over on my uh on my gopro so i'm going to send that over and stick that in and hopefully run through a few techniques probably five minutes or so and that'll probably give it a wrap. It's been a long video, and I know I've waffled a hell of a lot, but I feel like if you're getting into it, if you've, if, you know, if you know how to rasp fish, it's no, no point really watching it because there's nothing particularly groundbreaking on you. But if you're if you're starting out, I feel like I've given quite a few good tips away. Um, so yeah, brilliant. I'll get the uh, get the GoPro out and get that footage over as well. Well, you can get a little bit of a better idea what sort of ground we're fishing on if you look at it down there very shallow full of boulders it's got that bladder rack as well which is what we're asking for love so there should be a few fish here um obviously we don't want to keep that rod tip too low because your lure will just drag straight into a snag even weedless lures 
you know. So what we want to do is keep that line, always have a tight line with rust fishing, I find. Always um, keep that rod nice and high, and all I'm doing is I'm lifting, and I'm just letting it sink back down. I want that lure to move, but a little bit of pause, comp like complete pause, I don't think it makes a huge amount of difference, to be honest with you. Um, and we're just repeating that, really. And we're not, we're not fishing, you know, we're not spinning quick, we're just gently lifting the rod tip and slowly lowering it down, reeling in the slack. And the rust, you'll feel them hit because it'll just be a bang, bang, and then the rod will just go over. Um, and yeah, a really good hook set. They've got rubber mouths, you know. You generally don't lose too many because they've got, you know, such a, uh, I suppose rubber is the right word, but yeah, you, you know, they'll, they'll hold a hook nicely. So uh, that being said, there's absolutely no point for me. I've never found an advantage really fishing barbed hooks because you just end up tearing the mouth more than necessary and it's just, you know, I just don't think it's right for rats. You know, you can get away with get away with much, you know, a barbless hook, no problem at all. So that's one thing I'll always do. Um, helps preserve the lures a bit more as well if you're tucking them away. So it's a little bit on uh, kind of the method. <laughs> 